You're going to have to move. I know. I don't want to, though. Ha! In your face! Oh dear. So guess what I'm making this video? I wish I was a better loser, but I'm not. Now, I've got to build a new drafts board or checkers board or whatever you want to call it. The issue is, they've got to be different colours, the squares I mean. Most people use two different types of wood, but I can't afford two different types of wood. I've got two bits of scaffold board. I'll just figure out how to make them a different colour later. I'm sure it'll work out fine. Yeah. So the first step was getting these boards smooth. Now these are cut from two different scaffold boards and they are very rough sawn. So I did have to take quite a bit of material off. Next I gave them a quick once over with the sander. Now I don't need these boards to be hugely smooth because I'm actually going to be burning one quite heavily. Which is how I'm going to achieve the whole contrasting wood. I've never really tried burning this heavily before so wait and see how it turns out. And then it was over to the table saw to potentially kill myself. However, fortunately this time I managed to do everything safely. No kickback or anything. That riving knife is certainly doing its job. Now, this might seem a bit unnecessary. Why are you making a checkerboard pattern out of wood that is exactly the same? Well, I've tried burning a checkerboard pattern onto wood. I've tried being really careful when using stain. And short of just painting the squares on, I haven't been able to figure out a way. I've even tried using like insulated heat tape, but still the flame gets underneath it and you get a sticky residue all over it. So this is a bit of an experiment. I don't know at this point whether it's gonna work. I still can't decide whether it's worked now, even though I've seen the finished product. In case anybody's wondering, I'm doing 40 mil strips here. Now I know what I'm gonna be using for the drafts pieces or checkers if you like, and I'm making the squares slightly bigger than those pieces. Okay, so now I've got all my strips cut, here's my plan. The reason I pre-sanded this is because in theory, if I burn half of these, glue them in strips, then re-saw them and glue them again, should be a checkerboard pattern. The only thing I can see standing in the way is glue. Because to get rid of that glue, I am going to have to sand it off or scrape it. But I'm not going to let that stand in the way of me using a blowtorch. Something I did do but didn't film was actually gave all of those saw marks of sanding that you would have just seen on that last segment. Now, I'd already sanded the top but I've got a really useless table saw and those saw marks were quite prominent so I just sanded them with 80 grit. I'm using a map torch to really scorch this wood. I'm taking it way further than I have done in the past. I want it fully blackened. I've also pressed the blocks against one another and I've put two blocks on the side. I don't want the flame or burn spreading around the edges because that's going to take the glue and burning wood tends to make ash. So as you can see we've gone very dark. Now if I were to do this project over again I'd have gone even further because there will be some sanding that takes a bit of that char off. But this was an experiment. So here's my thought. I've taken these a little bit blacker than I would normally and I think if I did a light hand sand and then pre-finished all of these with wax then that should make glue clean up a lot easier so that squeeze out won't be a problem on the top is the thought and that's exactly what i did i just lightly i mean really lightly sanded the char i don't want to take any grain off as such i just want to get rid of some of the dust i've used finishing wax on the faces if you like the part that's going to be on the top of every board now, will this be appropriate? Will it work? I know it's not good practice, but my thought is when I press these boards together, if I get the glue up right, then any glue squeeze out on the top, I'll just be able to wipe off because the glue doesn't adhere well to the wax. That way I can use a really damp rag. 
the issue with squeeze out is normally you can sand it all back afterwards even if you've done a really good job cleaning it up there will be some sanding but I'm hoping I can avoid that by doing this I'm not gonna lie the glue up was torturous there was a lot of pieces to glue together and then you've also got the added pressure of making sure everything is absolutely flush with one another I know you try your best to do that anyway but there was nothing aligning these boards what you won't see in this time lapse if you like is I actually came back through with blocks of wood over the top clamped everything downwards as well but I couldn't do that until I clamped everything together because I had to have access to the glue as you can see there's quite a bit of glue squeezing out fortunately that wax trick worked amazingly the next day when I came back there was zero glue to clean up it was really smooth to be fair right so I was careful with my glue up so this is actually quite level it's not perfect but I knew it wouldn't be because I'm not using two different types of wood so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a perfectly straight edge here using the track saw and then I'll feed it through the table saw because I know that that's set up for the perfect width. Well you'll never guess what I did. I did exactly what I said I was going to do. I went down one edge with the track saw using a square for reference making sure that that was perfect 90 and then I took it over to the table saw and then just fed it through to get my second set of battens. This time I couldn't afford any of those saw marks on the side, so I was very careful when feeding it through the table saw this time. I made sure I wasn't applying undue pressure, I made sure I went slowly and made sure to be pressed right up against that fence. <laughs> okay, so I've got everything cut down now. And there's a bit of tear out because I'm using a useless table saw with a really useless blade in. However, I'm not too fussed about the tear out. This is not something to sell. It's not supposed to be high end. It's kind of an experiment to see if it can be done using one type of wood. So I've obviously made more bits than I need. I believe the drafts board that I destroyed was eight rows, which means I've got one spare. So if I've got one spare at that end, then I'll have one spare at the other end. But that's good because I did the numbers so that I can just flip these around and get my checkerboard pattern. I'm gonna give them a quick sand and then I'm gonna glue them up again. It's a lot of effort, this. Could have just bought one. I followed exactly the same process as last time. I gave everything just a very light sand and then I pre-finished it with wax, again being very careful to only put these on the surface, not on any of the glue up sides. I also learnt a lot from my first glue up as well, so this wasn't anywhere near as stressful as the previous one. I used blocks of wood across the top and clamped downwards onto the clamps, which I know are perfectly straight. Okay, I knew this was an experiment and I knew that it probably wasn't going to work. It's kind of worked. The glue up went as well as it could have done, but there's no accounting for the fact that there are still some ridges on the joints. Everything's lined up nicely, but ideally now I'd go and knock it back with some sandpaper and try and get this smooth so that the pieces can slide. But I think if I do that, I'm going to make a mess of it. I'm gonna lose the dark squares. However, I'm gonna go for it. I like to be honest on this channel and sometimes things just don't work. And I'm afraid this is one of those occasions where it just didn't work. I really like the contrasting colors of the white pine with the charred pine, but there was no way to use it as a draft board because the ridges would mean that you'd have to pick up the pieces to move them. So I had to sand it. Now, if I could do this again, would I change anything? I don't know if you could without using two different types of wood. 
If you guys know of any way, then please do let me know. Weirdly, and I think it's because I'm using really soft pine, that quick blast with the sander has actually taken all of those ridges off without taking away too much of the burnt. Yes, it's not perfect, but it's all right. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of white spirit just to take off and bring up some of the grain and then I might need to give it a little light sand after that. But because I'm gonna be waxing this project, I'm not too worried about the grain standing up. I'm hoping the white spirit will take away some of the burnt dust that's in the grain of the other pine. That's a lot. That's a fire hazard. Smooth. I feel like I could catch fire at any moment. I've watched a bit of a moss video, I'm just gonna lay this on the floor. So the other thing I need to do is obviously I've made this too long. Standard drafts board in the UK is eight squares by eight squares. Don't think it's the same as a chess board, but I don't know how to play chess. So I need to cut some squares off. Now I purposely made this longer because I wasn't sure how everything was gonna line up. So now I've got the freedom to just make one cut down there, one cut down there, and I'll have perfectly square edges. I'm gonna use the track saw. And that's exactly what I did. I used the track saw to take off the two ends, leaving nice clean cuts on every side. After that, I went over and I sanded everything, mainly the back and the sides. I didn't wanna to touch the top at all, really. The grain didn't pop up from putting white spirit on, so I just left it. The next thing I did was I took it over to the router table and just put a little bit of a bevel underneath. Nothing huge, it just makes a slab like this easier to pick up off a perfectly flat surface. Understanding that I'd already lost a lot of the contrast from having to sand down the burnt pieces of wood, I decided to try and make this a little bit more rustic and country style-ish, if that makes any sense. So I'm using this Jacobian, 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 whatever it is, wax. It gives it almost an oakish green oak look. I will mention I didn't apply a lot to the bottom because I'm actually gonna put a piece of cork matting on the bottom. Oh, don't mind me, just sanding my broom. I should probably explain. This is the most useless brush ever. It's old and I could repair it, but I also need some drafts, some pieces to move around the board. So I'm just gonna give this a rough sand and then I'm just gonna cut some discs over on the miter saw. Now the discs were flying all over the place. As you can see, they just kind of pop out the back, but sometimes they went flying. I just hung a rag on the back and it tended to kind of catch them and keep them all in one place. So I had 24 of these discs to cut, painstakingly hand sand. I had to burn half of them and then finish them all with wax. By the end of it, I was pretty fed up. As I mentioned earlier, I didn't want to finish the bottom of the project. Wax isn't great when it comes to contact adhesive, which is what I'm using here. I've got a bit of cork matting I've got left over from when I made some coasters. It's dirt cheap off Amazon. You spray the contact adhesive on both sides, leave it a couple of minutes until it's tacky, and then you stick them together. I'm just putting the masking tape there because the nozzle on this thing's got a mind of its own. And there it is, how to painstakingly spend three days building a draft board that you could have bought for a fiver. To be fair, there wasn't much work over those three days and I actually enjoyed doing it. So here it is, my finished draft board. I'm trying to find somebody I can beat, but the dog's not being very compliant. She won't even play for gravy burns. I guess I'll just look at it because I don't want to play the wife again. Thank you so much for watching. If you could take time to like or subscribe to the channel, that would mean the world to me. Take care. Bye-bye.